Ah, the closest we would ever get to a thing like episode. Fuck you two! Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for And Then There Were None, the 16th episode of Supernatural Season 6. And this is actually, I'm gonna say, probably one of my favorite episodes of the season. Now, it is admittedly because I'm a very big Thing fan. The Thing is my favorite sci-fi horror film of all time. I've talked about it multiple times on the show. I have several different editions of it, not just because of the amazingly terrifying practical effects that were put into that movie, but the fact that you can watch it hundreds of times and you still have questions that are legitimate about the film in terms of who was infected when, who became the thing, and who was a human where. It is such a great deception story and I feel that Supernatural tried their hardest to get that ideology, that deception, not knowing who anyone is, not knowing who to trust whatsoever, to its best ability in this episode. In this episode, we have the brothers coming to a town, this warehouse, along with Rufus, Bobby, Grandpa, and the last remaining Campbell, not for much longer, <laughs> because there is some slug thing that the mother of all infected into discount Brian Cranston at the beginning of the episode, who made him whack his own wife. But in this warehouse, it is infecting them one by one and making them kill each other off and making them distrust each other. Now, should this have been the entire concept of the episode that would have been nice i don't mind the beginning bit with brian cranston discount getting infected and the whole oh honey you need jesus if there was one episode one episode that i knew that i remember the most aside from the obvious ones from the season it was this episode because i remember being on the edge of my seat when this episode aired and it still does the exact same thing now anyone messes with me and the whole camp goes it is such a mind bender going through this episode trying to guess who is who and it starts off with a bang when dean blows the last campbell away as the thing in the ear you gotta be fucking kidding and then when sam blows grandpa away and it turns out that grandpa might not have been affected at all i actually like that moment where Sam's like, oh shit, did I just blow away a regular human? He feels sympathy for Grandpa, even though Grandpa screwed them over so many times at this point. Let's all be honest, we all wanted this fucking character out of here because he had just been written into the dirt. His purpose was non-existent at this point. To be honest, I don't even know why he was at this building. I don't even know what he was doing. As far as we know, Crowley's still dead and he would have the same assumption, so... Ooh. Keep hunting, I guess, for the sake of hunting? And then as close to a physical representation of the thing that I feel that they could have gotten to is when Grandpa's starting to get his head sawed out, that he just gets right back up again. I feel that was as close as they could get to the whole defibrillator scene from the thing, if you know what I mean. Clear! Clear! <laughs> And then Slugworm and Grandpa has a fight with Rufus and Bobby and gets electrocuted against the wall and then the thingy squids out and you don't know who gets it infected to. It kind of makes you think that they should have had some, you know, some protection perhaps. You know, possibly some protective headwear that some would consider the best on the Citadel. And there's also a little bit of character development going on, this kind of back and forth about Rufus and Bobby, a little bit about their history. And the fact that Rufus does not forgive Bobby for whatever happened in Omaha, and then there is that lingering, unanswered, unfulfilled wish to try and right a wrong that Bobby's never gonna have because, well, Bobby's possessed and he stabs Rufus right in the heart. It's a crock of shit. They kill off so many people in this episode. And then once they corner Bobby and they start torturing him, you find out what is actually going on at least the boys do they know more about the mother they find out her origins they figure out what she, her plan is which again i don't know how no one drew the comparison when season 14 michael dean was doing the exact same 
fucking thing. And then they almost kill him and there's all the goo and everything. Like really decent practical effects for this episode. Really enjoy it. And then they have another hammer where after they kill the thing, it cuts to black and then it comes back and the first thing you're looking at is a grave and you see the two boys looking down at it and there's nothing for a little bit and you're like, <gasps> and then Bobby comes up and you're like, ah, okay, a good little red herring, but still it gives you that slight, <gasps> oh no, what's gonna happen? Even though we know what's gonna happen in season seven. So overall, I really like this episode. This was the episode that I was looking forward to the most. It has a good opening with some funny humor and a real cool introduction to the mother and showing this little weird slug worm thingy. It has a fantastic main part where there's a lot of deception, a lot of thrilling tension, a lot of unknown and questioning hope and fear for the characters. And then it ends on a bang and a, and a loss with Rufus dying. I keep forgetting he died so early on in the show because I know somehow they're gonna bring him back, kind of. I think they're gonna go back in time or they're gonna have alternate histories. Oh yes, we are about to get the Titanic episode, aren't we, next one, but. But either way, I really, really enjoy this episode to the point where I'm probably gonna get a few questioning uh, remarks here, but I'm gonna give this episode a seven out of seven. I will be straight up. I think this is actually probably one of the better episodes of Supernatural from this season. It's got a great horror, dramatic action tone. It is a really good homage to the thing without saying it out loud, kind of like how in season three there was the dream episode that was a clear homage to Nightmare on Elm Street, but they did everything but actually reference it by name. That's what happens here as well i really enjoy this episode i'll admit i know that a lot of people said that the latter half of the season was going to let me down but so far it hasn't even though i know that this mother is not going to last long and i remember that pissed me off when it happened too but either way let's see what you guys have to say about this episode i may be alone in this but i always felt rufus's death was a necessary ingredient of tragedy shock and a somber ending that completed this episode very well i very much agree with you that's exactly probably my favorite my sentiment on that part i always really liked this episode and felt that it wouldn't have been as memorable without either his death or dean's reflection at the end on forgiveness a rare moment for dean's character the other deaths in this episode plus bobby's cop-out death are some more cheap shock value but i enjoyed them anyway and liked how the ending tricked us into thinking that bobby had passed this is one of my picks top picks for the season because it blends the main story such as it is with a decent monster hunt some decent character reflections on the meaning of family a few unexpected twists while being some more while being more hopeful of an episode and having this aspect of almost seeming to intimidate and abandon all hope. I know the two episodes are completely separate in both concept and execution, but they are very similar to me for the reason I can't really articulate. I would give it a five out of seven, but I could give see I could see you giving it a four out of seven just because while it's an improvement in quality, it's probably not what you call standout. Oh, I bet you were surprised by this review then. I really appreciate this episode. So the opening scene with Eve kissing the driver then biting his ear seemed odd to me. I liked Rufus's return, he has some great one-liners, I also like that he tagged with the brothers and Bobby. Besides, we have Dean, who I wish he had killed Samuel after saying welcome next time. That scene would have been epic. Another scene I found interesting is the scene between Bobby and Rufus when they talk about the events that took place in Omaha. They don't explicitly go into detail and according to this research I did, Bobby and Rufus needed a getaway driver and, and against Rufus's will, Bobby called in Rufus's daughter and she wound up getting killed. Oh, okay. That really does make sense then as to the relationship and just what's explained. I do like how they don't talk about it. But you just know, like, you have all the information you need. Sure, you would like more, but there's so much just in their emotion and how they deliver it. Moving on, we have this con worm. I hated it. It controlled Bobby and made him kill Rufus. Such a pointless death scene. And unfortunately, this episode became a trope that the show continued to do from season 6 to 10, and then 12 to 15, where the popular characters would die each season just for shock value. I can see some of that there, but I did like Rufus's death. Admittedly, when they were doing this season, I remember Jared Padalecki saying that he thought this was supposed to be the last season. So I can understand where they were going from there. I don't feel this is a shock value death. I think it actually is a, a good death for this episode. 
I thought it was like it's memorable. It's the one I always remember now because of this one. This is what I call a flush episode. It's when you have too many characters left alive and no idea what to do. So let's rip off the faculty of all things and flush down some underwhelming characters. It makes me wonder why did Rufus have to go down the drain as well? I guess they knew nobody cared for the Campbells, so they had to muster some emotion from the audience. What a way to go! Like I said, guys, I actually really like this episode for that reason. Like, I don't forget this episode because of it, and not in a bad way. But I, I apologize for those of you who do have a bad reflection on this episode. And then There Were None is clearly a bit of a budget saver for the monster. Always reminds me of brain slugs from <laughs> Star Trek Wrath of Khan. The idea of Eve making new monsters is a cool idea. Overall, a pretty good episode. Sad when Ruthis died. I never really liked the grandfather and much uh, as much i was glad he died love your videos jeremy oh thank you harry supernatural celebrates its best moments when the character when the brothers operate in the context of their family this means first and foremost the hunter family though the interactions between rufus and bobby has clearly shown that the family bond arises from the nature of their special job and from what they have experienced together and the long tradition in which they stand but that doesn't mean that they have their ties are problematic the relationship between bobby and rufus seems to mirror the complications between sam and dean and so we come to my biggest criticism of the episode rufus's death only good thing i think the writers killed him off is because they wanted to make bobby's fight against eve more personal but the thing is, they don't even do that anyways, especially as we go later on to this episode. Rufus is not mentioned again, really. For episode 4 to 7, the brothers lost family members, but they only stand on the grave of one. Because a theme points out, family membership isn't about blood, it's about earning it. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I like that part. Man, I, I'm am I actually the far more positive one for once Ooh, it's a rarity i was really glad to see the end of the campbell storyline i absolutely hated samuel when he absolutely totally respect disrespected bobby the way he did i want really wanted dean to kill him sucks it wasn't him good riddance dean's so right all because your blood doesn't make you family i did like gwen though I was really sad to see Rufus die because he and Bobby were great comedic gold. To me, they were a great team. Gamble made a stupid mistake getting rid of him, but I guess she had to kill off a character that the fans liked in this episode. Jim Beaver did a great job creating the creature that was possessing Bobby. Yeah, no, that's a really scary bit when he's possessed. I, I I'll agree there. And there, there were none is essentially Robert Singer taking over and cleaning house of the things he hated in this season. Apparently, season six is... Robert Singer's most hated season as he constantly cl clashed with Sarah Gamble of Creative Citizens and overall it was a very stressful production. The characters he hated the most were the Campbells as he had repeatedly said their storyline went nowhere so he finally disposed of them in this episode. The problem is, is that it was done in the most lifeless way possible. The setup is great and there is some great tension however every time someone dies it's so poorly executed. I didn't feel a thing. That goes for Rufus as well whose death is the worst in this episode. It's so random and at the same time so boring. I didn't even have the energy to cringe at the completely unwarranted death of one of the show's most beloved reoccurring characters. Overall, this episode could have worked, but it's clearly to me that even Robert Singer didn't uh, it didn't direct it. His lazy trademarks all over it. Wow. No, like, really? I was absolutely appalled. I was, like, in tears almost when Rufus died when I watched this episode live. I was even surprised with the Samuel episode. Like, sure, I really wanted that character gone, but just how it happened. And then there were none wraps up the Campbell storyline by my favorite line of uh, Dean this season. Just because your blood doesn't mean your family, you gotta earn that. I love the concept and the execution of the monsters possessing people. Seeing D, uh, Eve, seeing Eve talk about God's negligence towards his children in the second time. We hear a negative about God with Lucifer addressing his sadistic nature of enjoying his creation suffering for his entertainment. I love that Sand, Dean, Bobby, and Rufus are trapped with a monster. Rufus is deaf after we learn Bobby got a woman killed. That is a uh, Rufus is loved is heartbreaking and for the character. It explains Rufus's apathetic nature, but I love how Dean utilizes it in a way to express forgiveness towards Bobby and Sam. Very very good no that's exactly what this episode is i'm sorry you guys didn't have as much of a positive uh outlook on this episode i i loved it but that's also because like i said i'm a big big fan of the thing and this episode is clearly their cheap attempt at trying to make a homage to it and i thought they did an okay job all right guys thank you for your comments now we've got episode 17 my heart will go on please give me guys thoughts about that in the comments below and i'll read those off in the next review otherwise guys if you like the video leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe until then i'll see you guys next week